In today's video, I want to show you how we made some outdoor uh, shelves for the patio here. Uh, they kind of have an industrial look to them. We are using them for an outdoor entertainment center, uh, but I think this idea is going to work in any situation where you might could use a couple of shelves um, uh, that are mounted to your brick wall. If we haven't met yet, my name is David, and in my videos, I like to share with you my experiences in trying to save a few bucks on household maintenance and repairs. There are also some DIY projects on the channel related to home, auto, RV, boat. If these topics are interesting to you, please consider subscribing. The list of materials that you're going to need uh, for the shelf are going to be something for the shelf. We've chosen um, this uh, 2x6 pine treated uh, piece of lumber here. Uh, you know, we, we kind of uh, just eyeballed and figured out what we wanted. Um, you know, for our 32-inch uh, TV, we decided we wanted a 40-inch um, shelf so uh, you know you um, you know you if, if you want to do two shelves I guess you would you could get a uh, you could get two shelves out of an eight foot two by six uh, another thing that we're gonna need is a way to um, well let's let's go back up here all right we're gonna need a way to attach the um, the the iron uh, nipples to the uh, to the concrete or to the, the brick wall and so to do that you're gonna use a half inch um, black iron uh, floor flange you'll need two of those um, you're gonna need the a half half inch uh, by six inches long um, the, the the black steel pipe nipple and you'll want two of those and then for the end of this thing uh, you're gonna want two of these uh, half inch end caps um, the way that we're going to attach this thing to the wall is these concrete anchors here a quarter inch by three quarter inch uh, so the and you can see that's kind of the, um, that's what we're looking at right there is, is something like this. So uh, you want to, the tools you're going to need going to be a drill, uh, the appropriate uh, drill bit for those. Uh, so this is a six, 3 16 inch uh, drill bit that you would use. It's slightly smaller than a quarter inch, which is what the um, our, our anchor screws are. I uh, need a tape measure. A uh, little wax pencil for us is good for... Uh, marking on brick or concrete level and some 220 grit uh, sandpaper that we'll use to just kind of uh, you know uh, kind of sand up the, the edges there so let's get started okay so to get you caught up on where we are with this first shelf uh, you know the first bracket here if you want to call it that is the easiest one uh, you're just going to kind of put the shelf in a position maybe you got a friend to help you and you're going to find a place that you like go ahead and mount this one up. Then, um, you know, you, you want to have about six inches of overhang there. I think that kind of gives a good sturdy shelf because we're not going to screw these in or, or use brackets. We're just going to use the weight of the wood itself to, to hold itself in place. Okay, so then you would find the midpoint here between the center of the TV or the center of whatever you're, you're trying to, to center this thing up against. And, you know, you'll, you'll take a measurement out to the other side and you'll use your use your your wax pencil to kind of give yourself a a, a mark. Um, then you'll put your put your piece of wood back up here, and using a level, you'll set that there. And then you kind of move this thing around to a place where the the shelf is level. Take this off and mount your uh, mount your bracket, and you're good to go. So the way that we want this shelf. Uh, I guess to, to be, we want to give this cart room to slide up under the shelf. So we're going to have the cart in place like it is right now. And I have the tape measure here just to give us an idea of, you know, a straight line from the top bracket. Um, so we're going to come down and just kind of kind of make a long, you know, like a long line. And you could use a plumb bob or something like this to make sure that you're at a 90 degree angle. But, you know, this isn't rocket science. We're just trying to get an idea. And if you're interested in plans for this cart, uh, maybe it's a good time to go ahead and push that subscribe button and uh, you'll have access to uh, the video where we made this. And we use this for all kinds of stuff, like um, a Blackstone griddle. Um, it's a good prep station when you're grilling and just all around good, um, good cart. Okay, so now that you have your flange, uh, you know, where you want it here, uh, you'll just go ahead and take your wax pencil, make yourself some marks in here. and then you can remove that and drill your holes. Okay, you can see my concrete dust from the previous 
shelf. And I want to go ahead and just kind of put out there that the, the, there's no sense in drilling a hole really uh, longer than the, uh, than the screw itself. Something like this right here is going to be just fine. We're just going to mount our uh, floor plate on there using our anchor screws and a 5 16 inch um, nut driver. And what I like to do on these is put each of them in halfway and then come back and finish. Uh, just so, uh, you know, if your holes aren't exactly lined up, it'll make it easier uh, for, that to, for that to work out. And I don't think I told you, but the purpose of this, um, this shelving unit is to, uh, for our, um, our sound bar that uh, our friend Gail gave us, and I uh, just needed a place to put that. And so uh, kind of frees up a uh, space on this cart. And then, you know, I think uh, we'll put the sound bar up here, a subwoofer down here. Um, but yeah, you could put any number of things. Maybe if you wanted a DVD player or a Blu-ray or something like that. Okay, and so when this happens, you might have to get out your socket set and just finish those off because you're, uh, and you may have a, a drill driver that's better than just my, my drill here, uh, but it's just, this does not have the, uh, the torque to get those in there. And now we're just going to assemble the pieces. And you can just kind of put that on there loosely and screw this one in. And now we're ready to make the other one based off of this one. Okay, and again, using our tape measure as a plumb bob, we're gonna come down from the left edge of our, our top support, and we're gonna draw a line somewhere around the height of our right support that we just put up. And that's gonna be kind of a guide for us to use whenever we are assessing level with the uh, respect to the right one. Okay, and this is the part of the process where it helps to have an extra pair of hands because what we're gonna do now is take a look at the, we're, we're trying to line this one up to make sure it's level up there. I've lined this one up with the red mark that we made earlier. And so now um, we're ready to remove the uh, board and the level and I'll just make my marks here using my wax pencil. Before we'll take our six inch uh, brace and screw that in the wall. There it is. And now we can lay our two by six right on top. And there you have it. And at this point, we're done. I'm very happy with the results on this. Uh, you could choose to go ahead and put a, a coat of, of stain on there, kind of sand those things down, put some stain on there to give it a more polished look, and I think that's the way that we're going to go. But um, at this point, I think we have about $50 into this project for two shelves, um, so not too, uh, not too bad. And I think each shelf takes about, you know, maybe 20 minutes to build, so uh, it's not going to take up your whole day. Okay, and to prep this for staining, we're not going to get, uh, you know... We're not going to go crazy. We're just going to knock off some of that and then run the length of it, get our edges a little bit. This is, I think, 220 grit uh, sandpaper. But, you know, the whole, the whole uh, idea of this is just kind of an industrial look, uh, you know, kind of just a look that suggests maybe I don't bathe every day. And so nothing, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this. So It is just a beautiful day in central Arkansas. Very odd for August to be this cool i think it was 78 79 uh at noon today which is really nice so good day to get out and do this 
Um, if you've got a vertical smoker, it's great because it brings the wood up to chest level. You don't have to bend down over anything. The, really where I prefer to do all my sanding is on top of a vertical smoker. Just a little fast tip there for you. And after you sand it really good, you just kind of uh, sometimes want to put a little tack cloth and get some of that stuff off of there and just prep it a little bit better for, uh, for the stain. One thing to mention is that generally you want to um, let your, your pre-treated or your treated lumber um, dry out uh, for about six months before you apply stain to it. Fortunately, we had this lumber already on hand, and so we were able to uh, stain it the same day that we, we built the project. And the product here is a Minwax, uh, what is that, poly, what did that used to say? Stain and polyurethane. Uh, but it, the uh, the color is espresso. And an angled sponge brush is good for getting those cracks in between the 2x4s on this table. And now that we're done staining the cart and the shelves, we're just going to let those sit overnight and uh, you can come back and uh, well actually we'll flip those later on but when it'll, uh, we'll just come back at a later time and uh, move them back in place and we'll be done and there's the finished product an appropriate home for the new soundbar subwoofer and some other various uh, accoutrements uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up uh, feel free to uh, share subscribe comment i read all those and a big thank you to my uh, 180 subscribers it's uh, really a, a tickle whenever you see uh, uh, new subscribers. So thanks a lot. Hope to see you down the road and uh, God bless.